say good morning to everybody. We thank God for you today. We pray God blessing upon you today. Uh, I want to thank you this morning as the pastor for tuning in this morning, sharing your time with us in our praise and worship here at Second Missionary Baptist Church in Nashville, Tennessee. We just thank God for you. I want to uh, repeat what I've been saying each Sunday, and I'm going to keep on saying it. Um, but COVID-19 is very important uh, that you wear your mask and practice safe distance. I don't use the word social distance, but safe distance. Uh, pay attention to the objectives of the CDC guidelines. And don't get caught up in the hype, but pay attention to the objectives of those guidelines. Even in your family settings, you need to adhere to CDC guidelines. You still can have family settings if you do it the correct way. Unfortunately, too many people are not gathering in the correct way. Uh, this, uh, this COVID, now everybody knows they didn't know. Uh, you can be asymptomatic and be contagious. Uh, normally a virus, you have to have some type of fever uh, to be contagious. But this particular uh, strain of COVID-19, a uh, COVID coronavirus, I should say, you can be contagious and not have a fever. And so many people are spreading it to their loved ones in family settings. And so be careful how you attend funerals among families and other family. You can do it if you do what you need to do. And so uh, I pray for those who are taking this thing lightly. In Nashville, Tennessee last night, everybody was downtown, no masses. It was packed downtown last night. I didn't see it, somebody sent it to me and I saw it on a news channel. Uh, but let's pray that people would take this serious. Uh, pray that people get, get tested uh, you can get tested more than once in certain states, in Tennessee and Nashville is a place you can get tested more than one time. So I just want to share that with you, and we're now going to uh, ask uh, Ella Michael Gooch, our Minister of Education, to come with the announcement of Second Baptist Church. Again, I want to thank you for uh, spending your time with us, and I pray that our praise and worship will be meaningful to you today. Amen. Church, say amen. If you love the Lord, say amen again. Amen. Why don't we put our hands together for the Lord on today? Amen. Amen. Listen, we, as Pastor Barlow has said, thank you for joining in with us here at Second Missionary Baptist. If you are streaming live on Facebook and if you are on Zoom, we thank you for joining in with us and allowing Second Baptist to be your place of worship. If you will, just take the time out to share with us where you are from. And we want to greet you with Jesus' joy. And for the members of Second Baptist, we pray that you would greet our visitors and guests uh, electronically through uh, Facebook and the platform that you are viewing with us on live. Uh, because we believe in embracing and celebrating God for all our visitors. And we thank you again for joining in with us and allowing Second Baptist to be your place of worship. Amen. Amen. We are so excited uh, that God has been faithful and that God has been true to his word. And we thank you, uh, all the members of Second Baptist who have embraced and uh, taken seriously your responsibility on the principles of giving. Uh, we want to continue to worship God in our giving. And we have developed three safe platforms here at Second Baptist where you can give electronically. Uh, those platforms are through PayPal, and we want that you can give through PayPal at SNBC1902 at Hotmail.com. You can give through Givelify at Second Missionary Baptist Church, or you can give through Cash App, dollar sign SNBC1902. Those three platforms are available to you to give electronically as you can do so. Or if you choose to do so, you can mail your tithe and offering to 1000 Housing Avenue, Nashville, Tennessee, 37204. However you choose to give, we accept your gift on today. We can never be God's giving, no matter how hard we try. The Bible says when we give back, God gives back to us. 
pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And we thank God for your gifts on today. And we bless God for your obedience and your faithfulness to the ministry here at Second Baptist. Amen. Let us now stand for our vision statement as we recite our vision statement on today with conviction and with clarity. I see people of God being one with God's vision for his kingdom. I see the saved reaching the unsaved and uncommitted. I see compassion at work in the lives of people. I see a community of believers in communion with the creator of life. Oh, we see transformation. And let it start with me. If you would continue to remain standing as we go to the word of God on today, our scripture will be coming from Psalm 119, verses 97 through 106. And I'll be reading from God's word translation. Oh, how I love your teachings they are in my thoughts all day long your commandments make me wiser than my enemies because your commandments are always with me I have more insight than all my teachers because you have written instructions are in my thoughts I have more wisdom than those with many years of experience because I have obeyed your guiding principles. I have kept my feet from walking on any evil path in order to obey your word. I have not neglected your regulations because you have taught me how sweet the taste of your promises is it tastes. Sweeter than honey. From your guiding principles, I gain understanding. That is why I have every path that leads to lying. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. I took an oath and I will keep it. I took an oath to follow your regulations, which are based on your righteousness. The word of God for the people of God and God's people said together, Amen. Let us pray together, Second Baptist. O oh Lord, O oh Lord, how excellent is your name above all the earth. We love you, we magnify you, we adore you, we exalt you. You are the King of kings and you are the Lord of lords. You're still Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the first and the last. You are our God. You are our sustainer. And you are the lover of our souls. Thank you for redeeming us. Thank you for setting us free. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers us from our sin. God, we thank you that you have allowed us to come into your house and gather in your name to worship you on today. For you said in your word that they that worship you must do so in spirit and in truth. And God, we have assembled ourselves together, not for any shape, form, or fashion, but we have assembled ourselves together because you said in your word where two or three are gathered in your name, you will be in the midst of them. So God, so God, we invite you into our midst. God, we don't have to tell you what to do because you already know what to do. We don't have to tell you where to go because you already know where to be and what time to be at. So, God, we just want you just to visit us and arrest your presence on us. Transform us right now in this worship experience that we may be made the richer and the better. God, we pray for those who are sick among us. God, those who are suffering, those who are going through death and bereavement and loss. God, we pray that you would provide their needs 
according to your riches and glory that are found in Christ Jesus. God, you are the God of all comfort and you are the God of all mercy. You can do things that we can't do. God, you can do the impossible. You can do all things but fail. So God, we elevate you, we esteem you, we adore you. We love you just because of who you are. It is because of who you are, God, we give you glory. It's because of who you are, we give you praise. God, help us to forget about ourselves and to concentrate on you. God, we want you to do something supernatural in this place on today. Use us in spite of us. Move us out of the way so your Shekinah glory can be seen in this place. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us on today. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us on today. Bless our shepherd and his family. Continue, O oh God, to hold him in the hollow of your hand. Keep him safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. Continue to pour into him wisdom and leadership that he might lead us as you lead him. God, we pray right now again that you will forgive us for our many sins and shortcomings. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, you the glory, and you the honor. God, we are expecting great things because you are a great God. We love you, we adore you, and we give you all the praise and all the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let every believer say together, amen. Come on, y'all. Put those hands together for the Lord on, to, on today. Come on. I said put those hands together for the Lord Jesus on today. Amen. We're going to go higher in our worship as our praise ensemble takes us into the presence of God through singing.
love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. Amen. And put your hands together for our praise team. Amen. Put your hands together for those our praise team. We thank God for them. Thank God for our musicians. And now let us, amen, prepare to welcome our minister of Christian education, Elder Michael Gucci, as he come to us as God has prepared him, amen, with the energy and the insight that God give him. I know that, amen, we're getting ready to have a, a word from on high, amen, Elder Michael Gucci, amen. Church, say amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day, and we thank you, Lord, for what you will do. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done, and Lord, we thank you for what you're doing right now. God, we pray that you would speak to us as only you can. We pray that you would be pleased to use us in spite of us. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your many blessings. We thank you, Lord, just for the gift of life and health and strength. Thank you, Lord, for keeping us. When we couldn't keep ourselves, thank you for providing for us. When we didn't have the means to do so, thank you, Lord, for being our God and our friend. You are everything to us. We're nothing without you. We lean and look to you for all things. All that I am. I am because of thee, and all that I'm not, I'm not because of me. Allow the words of this mouth and the meditations of this heart to be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer, it's in your name, that name that is to be above all names, we pray and let the church say amen amen grace be unto you and peace from god our father and from the lord jesus christ i greet you with jesus joy jesus joy is joy that the world didn't give and because the world didn't give it, y'all smart folk can finish that for me. The world can't take it away. Jesus, Joy says, that when my check doesn't match my bills, I'm still not messed up about it. Because he shall supply. Come on, y'all. All my needs. According to his riches and glory. Jesus joy says that when I go to the doctor and I get the bad report or a bad prognosis, Jesus joy says, and by his stripes. I wish I had half of a church. I am healed. That's Jesus joy. Jesus joy says when my family and friends have put me on standby and don't want to be bothered with me. Jesus, Joy says, he will never leave me, nor forsake me. Can you just give God a hand clap of praise just for Jesus, Joy? Amen, 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 amen. Want to thank uh, God for my pastor, uh, Pastor Barlow, who I truly love and respect so much. Um, he's been a blessing to me and my family, been a blessing to my ministry. Thank God for his lovely wife, who I love also, who my wife is very fond of and who, love, who she loves dearly, and my children as well. 
And to you, Second Baptist of the Deacons, the trustees, uh, this wonderful, wonderful music ministry, amen. Let's just bless God for them. Amen. My friend and brother, Trustee Barlow, on the keys, amen, for his faithfulness. And brother Steve, for his faithfulness, and Brother Jeff. Amen for their faithfulness and Brother Cedric in his absence. And we thank God for all of you all. It's good to see some of our Wedgwood Tower friends in the house. Amen. Amen. Good to see y'all. Amen. 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 We are definitely in uncertain and unusual times, but God is still to be praised. Amen. Amen. There's a word we want to look at um, that comes from the book of Psalm, Psalm 91, Psalm 91, if you are viewing with us online, you can stand wherever you are, if you're in your kitchen, your living room, your bedroom, the bathroom, wherever you are, you can stand with us, amen, and read the word of God as we stand together to look at just two verses. Psalm 91, if you have it, why don't you say amen. amen. Reading from the King James, says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, in him I will trust. That's all I want to deal with, verse 1 and 2. He that dwelleth in the secret place, you may be seated, of the Almighty, uh, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and fortress, my God in him I will trust. I want to talk about I'm safe and secure. Safe and secure. Safe and secure. The book of Psalm is considered to be the Hebrew hymnal. The book of Psalm is classified in the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible as one of the books of wisdom. It's in that same classification with Proverbs and Job and Ecclesiastes, the wisdom literatures of the Bible. The book of Psalm is divided into five divisions. Book one is chapter one through 41. Book two is chapter 42 through 72. Book three, 73 through 89. And book four, 90 through 106. And the fifth division is Book 107 through 150, the book of Psalm, yeah. is divided into five divisions. It's classified as one of the wisdom literatures of the Bible, and it's known as the Hebrew hymnal. More intimately, stay with me, the book of Psalm can be summarized as personal testimonies of God's protection, God's provisions, and God's uh, anointing. Yeah, 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 yeah. The book of Psalm mm -hmm. is nothing but a documented record of God's goodness toward humanity. 
Psalm 91 says that he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. In him, I will trust. That's the text. Why does this text matter in, in light of a pandemic? Why does this text matter? And how is this psalm relevant to where we are in the 21st century in the middle of a crisis? This text matters because what it says to us and it summarizes this. And really we can go home after I state this. That the presence of God assures us both safety and security from our enemies and susceptibility from our fears. That's what Psalm 91 says. It assures us of God's security and God's protection while yet we are faced with dangers and uncertainties. And I wish I had some believers on today that could testify that the God you serve is able to keep you while yet you are going through danger. That God has proven himself faithful. That God has proven himself worthy. That he is able to sustain and keep you while yet you are going through trials and tribulations. While yet you are faced with dangers. While yet you are faced with haters and enemies. God is able to keep you. Not only is God able to keep you from your enemies, but God is able to keep you from the susceptibility from your own fears. Psalm 91 is a beautiful psalm. It is recited for those who have been depleted and those who are in distress. The historicity of this psalm is uncertain, while yet some, some commentators and scholars will contend this psalm was sung while yet ancient Israel went to battle. It is unsure the history of this psalm. But one thing is certain of this psalm is that everything that we do and everything that we are can be assured simply by the presence of God. In other words, our safety and security is predicated on who God is. Then let me go ahead and make some of y'all mad because on today I'm not going to talk about you, but I'm going to talk about God. Because the truth of the matter is, it is because of God that we're able to do what we do. It is because of God that we live and move and have our being. It is because of God that we can be assured. It is because God we can be secure in the midst of our fears and uncertain times. Look at the text. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Psalm 91 is a conditional psalm. Lord have mercy. The psalmist emphatically makes it case that the power and the provisions of God and the protection of God is simply a decision to trust God. Come here, come here. You can't have God's protection, God's provision, and God's power if you're not willing to trust God. This psalm is a conditional psalm. What it says to us, if you decide to trust God, then God will keep you, God will provide for you, and God will empower you. See, I knew you wouldn't say amen because y'all want to get quiet on me because some of y'all don't want to trust God. Some of y'all want to trust other things. But the Bible says that when we make God our trust, then God will make us his priority. This conditional psalm is a psalm that is predicated on a conscious decision for the believer to trust God while yet in the midst of danger. 
If we read the psalm in inverse, this is what it would say. If you're not dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, then you're not under the shadow of the Almighty. And because you are under the shadow of the Almighty, you are in the secret place of the Most High. In other words, when you decide to make God the center of your life, when you decide that you're going to trust God, then God assures and guarantees that he'll keep you under his shadow. Let's look at the text. The word dwell in the Hebrew simply means to sit and settle or to be married to. Lord have mercy. In other words, what the psalmist is saying is this. When we decide to sit and settle or marry in God's presence, then God will decide to keep us in his presence. The word dwell simply means that I'm going to stay right where I am even when things don't look the way they should look. You dwelling is not predicated on how it looks, but you dwelling is predicated on your confidence in God to keep you. In other words, if you're committed to stay, then God is committed to bless. This word dwell is a powerful word because it talks about sitting and settling or to be married into God's presence. The word dwell and abide in the English language looks to be the same, but in the Hebrew, they're two different words. While yet the word dwell simply means to sit and settle, the word abide simply means to stay overnight. Lord, have mercy. In other words, stay with me. Hold up. Stay with me at the crib. When you decide to spend the night with God, when you decide, Lord, have mercy, to stay overnight with God, then God assures that he'll keep you in his shadow. When you decide to rest and to marry God in the shadow of the Almighty, then God promises to secure you from danger seen and unseen. This word abide means to stay overnight. It means, pastor, to spend the night. And I wish I had just some real folk in here that could just get excited, that could just testify that one night with God is all I need. That one night with the Lord is better than a million nights with somebody else. If we learn just to stay with God, if we learn just to stick it out with God, God assures us that he'll provide and protect us while yet we go through what we go through. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Almighty. The Most High shall abide under them, the shadow of the Almighty. This, this secret place, y'all, refers to ancient Israel's place of worship. Secret place in this text deals with what we now in the Old Testament know as the Holy of Holies. The Holy of Holies was the place in which the high priest could only go to atone for the sins of the people. And the high priest had to make sure that he was right before he went in there because if he went in there, he would fall dead. And so they would tie a rope around his waist just in case he went in there wrong so somebody had to pull him back out. And so the, and so the Holy of Holies was actually the place where the presence of God was there because the Ark of the Covenant dwelled in the Holy of Holies. And on the Ark of the Covenant, that was called the mercy seat, or as we know as the propitiation. And so what the text is saying is that when we make God our mercy, when we make God our priority, then God will give us what we need in the midst of what we're going through. 
the secret place is the place where God dwells. And what the text is saying is that when you find yourself in trouble, God will keep you in the same place where he is. Is there anybody in here that can just give God praise that God will keep you not far from him, that God will keep you right next to him in the secret place of the Almighty? The secret place is a medical, metaphorical term that represents the space in which God resided. So it could be translated like this. He that sits and settles in God's presence, pastor, will spend the night and be covered by his presence. If we can just transliterate Psalm 91 verse 1, it will simply say, he that settles and sits in God's presence will spend the night and be covered by his presence. In other words, when you decide to dwell with God, when you decide to spend the night with God, then God's presence will spend the night with you. And that's a good news for somebody because somebody's been up all night crying and crying and praying and trying to figure out how you're going to get through it. And I stop by to remind you that when you decide to spend the night with God, that God will spend the night with you. That God will get a pillar and lay down next to you and let you know that everything is going to be all right. safe and secure. I'm safe and secure with God. Is there anybody that can testify that you're safe and secure with God? This this psalm, y'all, verse one is the thesis or the thematic thrust of the entire psalm. Everything that falls under verse 1 is predicated on verse 1. The thesis of this psalm is that after we make a conscious and clear decision to trust God, then God will do some things for us that needs to be done. There are four words in this text. Let me teach for a minute. There are four words in this text that the Hebrew writer uses to ascribe to God. The first word he uses is most high. Most high suggests that God is transcendent above all. That the God we serve is higher and bigger and better than anything and anybody. This was important because ancient Israel, after they settled in Canaan, encountered polytheism and polytheism was that other religions had many gods and God had to remind his people while yet other folk have many gods there's still only one true God and that true God is the most high that true God transcends all that true God is above all is there anybody in here that can give God praise that we serve a, a most high God This word Elion, Elion in the Hebrew Most High talks about the transcendence of God. Watch this. The shadow. A shadow is made from darkness. A shadow comes when light penetrates darkness or when an object penetrates darkness and light hits the object. Shadows come from darkness. And so what the text is saying is that while yet God is transcendent, God is imminent. Lord have mercy. That God will be with you while yet you're in the darkness and that his presence can extend beyond where he is. Okay, let me try it again. God's presence can extend further than where he is. In other words, there's no place you can go where God's presence can't go. That's why you can get happy on today. That while yes, sometimes you can't feel like God is with you, you know that his presence is still with you. This word, most high, is the word Elion. It talks about the transcendence of God. And also it deals with the eminence of God. That God is 
transcendent, but yet God is imminent. That the God we serve is still bigger, but yet he's so personal that he's still with us. That the God we serve ain't too bougie to get his hands dirty. The God we serve ain't too good to come down and see about us. While yet he sits high and looks low, his presence is still with us. He uses the word most high. Second word he uses in verse 1 is almighty. Everybody say almighty. The word almighty is where we get our word El Shaddai which talks about the all-sufficient one. Watch this, Pastor. This blew my mind when I did my homework. Uh, the word El Shaddai means all-sufficient one or the mighty-breasted one. The root of the word El Shaddai is the word shod. Let the church say shod. Shod is the where we get our word breast. Uh, the breast is part of the woman that gives nurture and sustenance for human life. It's the female organ that gives satisfaction and sustenance and supplies nurturing for the safety and security of human life. And so what the Bible is saying is that God nurtures, God supplies, and God satisfies. Lord, have mercy. The God we serve is not only transcendent, but the God we serve is a provider. The God we serve is a sustainer. The God we serve is a nurturer. The God we serve is our shadow. He is the all-sufficient one. When I don't have enough in my, in, my, in my lowest moments, he is my sufficiency. Everything, come on y'all, everything that I need and everything that I am can be found in God. Okay. Let me go ahead and talk about God for a minute. God is the only one that can exert energy, energy and not deplete energy. God is the only one who doesn't have an ending because he doesn't have a beginning. God is the only one that can be everywhere at the same time. God is the only one that can do some stuff and be places that you can't do and can't be. And what the Bible says to us is that when God is our sufficiency, that when we don't have, we can go to God and get what we need. He never depletes in energy while yet he exerts energy. He is our sufficiency. He is the El Shaddai. He is the sufficient one. He is the shot. He is the mighty breasted one. He is where our nurturing and sustenance comes from. He is the giver and sustainer of life. This psalmist says that he that dwelleth in the secret place or in the presence of God shall abide under the shadow of the transcendent God and shall abide under the shadow of the God who sustains and provides. Verse 2, he says, because of this, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, and my God I will trust. Notice the text. The text opens up using third person language. The text opens up using third person pronouns. He, our, you. This is because the psalmist wants us to understand that the same God that done it for me is the same God that can do it for you. That God is just not confined to doing it for one person, but God is always obligated for doing it to somebody else. And somebody ought to get excited because you see somebody get blessed. You see somebody get something and you're still wondering, God, where you going to come through for me? God, I'm still waiting for you to show up for me. And I stop by to let you know if God done it for somebody else, then God will do it for you. So you can go ahead and give God praise because he'll do it for you just like he done it for somebody else.
He moves from reverence to relationship. He moves from priority to personal. He moves from third person now to first person. He says, I will say, I will say that he is my refuge. He is my fortress and he and I will trust him. Watch this and I'm almost done. Y'all can wake back up. Text says that the psalmist makes a personal and public uh, declaration that he will trust God after he considers that he is the most high and that he is the El Shaddai he now makes it public that he will trust God watch this he says he is my refuge now when I worked in Metro Parks and I've shared this before and I'll share it again when I worked in Metro Parks uh, the community centers had this yellow diamond on the side of the building that says, this is a safe place. That sign was for the homeless people and the people who are on the street to let them know that the facility was there for them to find shelter when they couldn't sustain themselves outside. See, I knew y'all wouldn't get it. The shelter that provided, uh, the, 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 the building that provided shelter to those who didn't have shelter was a place of refuge. And so we have to understand this, is that shelter in this text or refuge in this text suggests a temporary place. In other words, the psalmist says that God can be your temporary place of hiding. When you find yourself in trouble, that God can be temporary and that God can provide you a place of refuge while you go through what you go through. That God is so good that he'll put shelter over you while yet you are in transition to that place where he's taking you. <laughs> refuge is a temporary place meant for a person while they're going through transition. In other words, God is saying this. You are going through transition right now, so I'm going to provide a place for you to chill while I work on you and get you to where you need to be. Somebody don't know, somebody don't know when to shout. Because the truth of the matter is, God is still working on us. God is still developing us. And while yet God works on us, God provides a place of refuge for us. While yet he transitions us to that next place. He's my refuge. Yes, sir, he's my refuge. Not only is he my refuge, y'all, but he's my fortress. Fortress speaks of a place of permanence. And so this is what the text is saying, y'all. Stay in your seat. I promise you, I'm almost done. That God, that God can be everything I need, both temporary and permanent. That God just ain't temporary and God just ain't permanent. But God is both temporary and permanent. So what that says to us is that wherever I find myself, whether in transition or whether I'm situated, God is still right there. Is there anybody in there that can give God praise that he can be both temporary and permanent? Yes, sir. Fortress speaks of permanence. Fortress was a place, a fortified place, where people would go for protection while yet under attack. And shelter and refuge was a place where people would go temporarily to provide, to get what they need in order to transition to that next place. And lastly, he says, he's my God. In him I will trust. The last two Hebrew words he uses is this, and I'm almost done, I promise. The word Lord in this text is the word Jehovah. Yeah. 
the self-existent one. The one who is, was, and always will be. Let that sink for a minute. In other words, the psalmist says, the reason why I can trust God is because God was, God is, and God always will be. In other words, wherever I'm at, wherever I'm at, and whatever I'm going through, God has already got me covered because he is the self-existent one. He is Jehovah. The position of God, that God can be everywhere at the same time. And lastly, he talks about my God, the word Elohim. Let the church say Elohim. Elohim refers to the creative work of God. That God is the only one that can speak and it can be done. God is the only one who can take nothing and make something out of it. We call that in theology ex nihilo. That God reached out into nothing and took nothing and threw it out into nothing and something became of it. You'll catch that on the way home. In other words, God can create whatever that you need in your life to keep you until you get to your next point. And you ought to give God praise because he is the still creator. While yet man events, God creates. God doesn't need anything that's pre-existed to do what he needs to do because God can speak and it can be done. Come here, let me show y'all something. God doesn't need any outside entities to do what he needs to be done. God creates and man events. And so we celebrate God because what that says is where there is nothing, God can take that nothing and make something from it. I'm done. It says, I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge, he's my fortune, he's my God. The psalmist gets personal, he says, he's my God because I know him. He's my God because he knows me. We have history. We got some ups and downs together. We've been through some trials and tribulations together. And because we've been through a lot together, he knows me and I know him. And we can celebrate God and we can make that statement about God. While yet we know God, God knows us. He is our God. The Golden Gate Bridge is located on the entrance of the San Francisco Bay. And it's the world's largest bridge and most spectacular suspension bridges in the world. It spans 8,891 feet through mid-air. It's noteworthy that while constructing this bridge, unknown and unnamed workers lost their lives, falling precariously from 200 feet above the Pacific waters. As a result, this construction was always constantly behind Steve. It wasn't until someone hit the idea of building a safety net directly under that bridge, a safety net directly under that construction area that permitted workers the safety and security to finish the work without fear of losing their life. I'm out of here, y'all. Since y'all acted brand new, let me go ahead and give it to you because you don't know when to shout. I know a man who created a safety net. I know a man who created a safety net that can assure me that I can do what needs to be done without fear or without losing my life. And is there anybody in here that can give God praise that the God we serve is able to keep you and to kill you? That the God we serve is able to do some things for you that you couldn't do for yourself? And as I go to my seat on today, 
I'm so excited that the God we serve promised to keep us through all that we go through. Is there anybody in here that can give God praise? Because God is able to keep you. That God is able to secure you. That we don't have to fear that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. In him I will trust. And I'm going to trust God even while I go through what I go through. Is there anybody in here that can give God praise that God will keep you? Is there anybody in here glad that Jesus build a safety net up under your life that he guaranteed that if you fall down you're not going to die. That if you fall down you can get back up again. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood. Ain't you glad that we're safe and secure from our arms? I'm leaning on the Lord. I'm leaning on the everlasting arms. What a fellowship. What a joy divine. I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. Oh, I'll bite the path that glows from day to day. I'm leaning on the everlasting arm. Oh, what a fellowship. Oh, what a joy divine. I'm leaning. Say yeah. We safe. You're secure in the midst of COVID. You secure. You covered by the blood of Jesus. You covered by the blood of the Lamb. You can walk without fear. You don't have to be afraid. The God you serve will keep you because He's faithful. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Come on, y'all. Say yeah. Amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. What a mighty word today. What a mighty word today. How many of you are, are praising God that God has provided a safety net? That you can work and not fear life. If you hear the word today, I invite you as we stand here at Second Baptist, those who are in person, we stand with me as we extend invitation. If you have joined us today by Facebook Live and, and you don't have that safety net that the preacher talked about, safe in that that you can go through life and not have to worry about dying. That you can work and don't have to worry about dying. Same safety net that Christ spoke to a sister. And she was concerned by the fact that he didn't show up in time. That perhaps he could have saved her brother's life. He simply said, and I paraphrase, that he that believe in me shall not die but live. Christ is our safety net. And if you have not made up your mind to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I invite you today to accept Christ, Jesus the Christ, as your personal safety net. I wouldn't put it off. We can see that all the things that we're going through, that those of us who truly trust Christ as our safety net, 
Even in this, we still have peace. In the midst of COVID-19, we have peace because we know that we have a safety net. Why not give your heart to Christ today? Call a friend, or you can call Second Missionary Baptist Church and we will pray with you. 615-298-1832. We will pray with you and share with you the goodness of Jesus Christ. We invite you to not only become a spectator, but become one of those who know that Christ is your refuge and he is your shelter. He is your forfeiture. May God bless you. May God keep you. It's our prayer. You may take your seats here. We thank the preacher, Elder Gooch, for that mighty word. I want to encourage you. Amen. That this is, this, is, this is one of those words that you need to go back home and meditate upon. And so I'm going to invite you to look it up with a YouTube channel, SMBC 1000. And throughout the week, you need to hear this word again. Amen. What a mighty word. Amen. SMB, SMBC 1000 is our YouTube channel. And it will be loaded pretty soon on the YouTube channel. Thank God for all of you coming today, being with us here at Second Baptist in person. I thank God for you who come, continue, man, to follow our guideline, which are based on the CDC guideline, is that we do wear our masks as we come in the sanctuary, uh, that we do practice safe distance, as I, I don't call it social distance, but safe distance. Thank God for all of you adhering to that. I continue to pray, to, amen, that those of us, uh, those persons, brothers, who are, are not adhering to the guidelines, will do it so we can get back where we're going. But I, I, I thank God for the word today. Amen. I thank God for the word today. And, and as Ella was preaching, I thought about the fact that, amen, that uh, the Zoom and Facebook is just a, a refuge now. I, <laughs> it's a refuge. I don't know about you, but I'm lonely for the day that we can come back in our houses of worship. And COVID-19 is not a threat to us, amen. And so I thank God for the refuge. I thank God for you joining with us today. Tune in uh, this coming Wednesday for our uh, Word from a Word at 6 p.m. Facebook and Zoom. Tune in at 7.30, I mean 7 o'clock on uh, Tuesday morning for our devotional and prayer time, 7 a.m., uh, free conference call. It's on a conference call, free conference call. And then Thursday, it's, it's 6 p.m., right? Thursday, 6 p.m. for the Young Adult um, Bible Study. And then right at 11.30 today, uh, our youth uh, children ministry will be on, on Zoom today. May God bless you. May God keep you. It's my prayer. I don't know about you, but I've been blessed. Amen. I don't know about you, but I have been blessed. Amen. The, the man of God unpackaged the word today. Amen. And so doing, I have been blessed. Now, let me say, as we get ready to leave, I'm going to ask Ella Goose to come back and dismiss us. As you know, we don't take up offering anymore in our settings. But if you brought an offering on your way out, uh, the deacon will be back there. You can give it to the deacon. Uh, as you're on your way. If you brought an offering, you have not mailed the offering in, have not used our electronic platform to give, you can give that offering on your way out. Uh, if I ask one of the deacons to uh, be back on the door. Amen. May God bless you. May God keep his my prayer. Amen. Let's have a good day. Let's have a safe day in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Ella Gucci. Amen. Church, say amen. Amen. If you would stand. Be encouraged on the gay church that God is your safety and he is your security. While yet we will continue to.
proceed with caution and practice safe habits and follow the necessary guidelines and protocols, we will not live in fear. We will not stop living life. The life still goes on. And that if God kept you then, God can keep you now. Let me give the benediction. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you and give you his peace. The God who is our safety and security, the Most High, the El Shaddai, the Elohim, Jehovah, to you be both majesty, dominion, and power. And may the blessings of Almighty God that are fully revealed in Jesus Christ, the safety net that has been provided for us so that when we fall, we will not perish. Be with you now, henceforth and forevermore. And God's people said together, amen. Go in peace and return in love.